in the early 1900s, they started a, a poison campaign to get rid of prairie dogs. They were seen as competition for a lot of livestock and ranching and communities and things like that. So um, there was actually participation by the federal government to help poison and eradicate the prairie dog. Last prairie dog was seen in 1961 here in Arizona. Arizona was the only state completely successful in the eradication effort. The absence of the prairie dogs, prey for many predator species, has resulted in repercussions across the landscape. The numerous burrows in the prairie dog colonies provide homes to many reptiles, and the blacktail's constant digging helps grasses grow better. Changing courses in the 1970s, the Arizona Game and Fish Department started looking at reintroducing the prairie dogs. Recently, some blacktails were brought back to southern Arizona. Many people describe prairie dogs as a keystone species, a species that through its burrows and its excavations uh, and the way that it forages and, and keeps shrubs down and keeps grass cover down, that they have this, this very important impact on the system that, that they're part of. Let's stick them over here. To document the blacktail's role as a keystone species requires research, hands-on research. In this case, we, we knew that we wanted to be able to follow individuals over multiple years. As a result, we needed a permanent kind of marking technique. So we used pit tags. So he's pit tagged, and it's 1306-109. So these passive integrative transponders, the, the chips that we often put in our dogs and cats, and that allows us to follow individuals over time in hand. And then for the short term, we use a fur dye. We mark them so we can tell apart individuals from each other, and that way we can get accurate counts of the population without recounting the same individual. And we can also tell who's interacting with who, if it's male or female, juvenile or adult, and other details. The first two seasons were just behavior and population trends with population change and reproductive success. And these next two years, I'm shifting focus to answer the keystone species question, whether these species act as that keystone species after they're translocated. Prairie dogs were transferred to their new location on the Bureau of Land Management's Las Cienegas National Conservation Area, 45 miles southeast of Tucson, in 2008. We've had a lot of unexpected challenges. You know, everyone expected when we put these prairie dogs out that they would just spread like wildfire because that's what they do. And, you know, this is five years later and none of the colonies have expanded beyond what we've cleared for them. We also started this reestablishment project in the middle of a drought and the drought has been really tough. We also have started doing a supplemental feeding during these dry seasons. When we're not getting those winter rains, we are putting a, an alfalfa pellet out and just, it works in actually two ways. It keeps them close to their burrows, so we're not getting the predation that we were seeing when there's no forage for them. They would go out in the tall grasses and get picked off. And also healthier prairie dogs, they're gonna have more offspring. Two years ago, we had uh, 12 pups come above ground out of our three colonies that we had and only one survived. And last year, due to the supplemental feeding, we had 137 babies come up. So it's, it's huge, the difference that that supplemental feeding makes. Some have acquired an appetite for the tasty bait used to lure the prairie dogs into the research trap. The creamy, not crunchy peanut butter works too well, sometimes. Several of them that realize that the traps are associated with food so sometimes